It's a few days later when I'm finally able to hang out with Alex like we'd planned. Cassius had stepped up his campaigning over the past several days as his chances of becoming emperor increased. So did Amicus after his decreased. The difference being that Alex often found himself going on campaign trips with the White Wolf while Amicus always left me behind. I think Amicus had picked up on the fact that I don't like being out in front of so many people after the whole dance incident. Still, he promises me that when he wins the next trial, we'll go out to the city to celebrate. I don't know if we'll ever see the city. I'm a little mm. bit sad about that. <laughs> For now, though, I'm happy to stay in the gardens with Alex, enjoying a quiet midday meal as we both talk and sip our tea. Honestly, they should have us redo the dance if your lingua wasn't translating. Was yours? Well, no. But I knew it wouldn't. Wolves never intend for their lyrics to translate over the lingua, because it ruins the howl, which they see to be the whole point of singing. Hmm. I could understand Amicus overlooking that, though. Most wolves never see other sibling species in person in their entire lives. Well, it's over now. On to the debate thing they're going to do next. Oh, yes. Cassius has been training with the best... Uh... Rhetorician. Rhetorician. Rhetor rhetoric yeah, I guess rhetorician. Rhetorician. I want to add I know, I know, I know rhetoric. I totally want to say rhetoricians, <laughs> which is too many. Rhetoric rhetorician <laughs> on the moon. Marcus Manius. I know I noticed that he puts a little bit of emphasis on the name, and I look over at him. Alex sips at his tea daintily, watching the fountain lazily. He's offered Cassius many tips on convincing the triumvirates. Very useful tips, actually. Is Amicus doing anything similar? Dude, I, shut up. You like <laughs> Dude, dude, dude. No, no, no. I realized then that Amicus uh, that Alex is offering me information on what Cassius is doing to prepare for the trial. That's why he put the emphasis on the name of exactly who he's training with. Yeah. It's the stra it's the strategy that Cassius is up to. At least I think he is. Whether that's the case or not, I try to remember the name of the rhetoric guy, knowing I should tell Amicus later. I see. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that he's, like, still, like, on our team, but I also, like, have a certain feelings towards Alex at this point. I mean, mm -hmm. I think, I, like I said, I think he's still, like, amicable with us, but he's a, he's a little bit treacherous at this point. I'm not really sure. He hasn't told me all that much about what he's doing, but hopefully it'll be something similar. Well, I recommend he study the triumvirates in their cities, if only to find the best way to convince them during the second trial. Yep, definitely offering me information. That is very nice, Alex. Thing is, after seeing the way he and Cassius interacted, I wonder if I can fully trust him. You know, Cassius was saying something earlier when I was serving him about a week ago. Did you know that he plans to get rid of the triumvirates? Alex's eyes widened for a moment. Oh, really? Hmm, I wonder why. Something about it being easier to rule directly than r rather than through elected officials? Well, that's some radical thinking, isn't it? That's what Virginia said. Well, she's always been rather reasonable. Honestly. Alex leans in, lowering her his voice. I'd rather she'd become the Empress. But unfortunately, the wolves don't allow females to hold positions of much authority, so her chances at the throne are nil. What the f- that, that's fucked up. <laughs> More not good information about the wolves. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of guessed this already. Yeah. Virginia seems very competent, which is why that bums me out quite a bit. Alex's eyes suddenly widen as he looks over my shoulder. I raise my eyebrows, then look back to see Neferu making his way towards us. I turn around and see Alex looking down toward the ground, his tail lashing around before he holds it in his lap. That's my favorite Alex face. <laughs> the flustered Alex. Yeah. The get away from my grapes Alex. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> the jackal stops to stand in front of us. Without a word, he delicately takes one of Alex's paws and bows low to kiss it. Alex raises his other paw to his mouth, blushing furiously. <laughs> Meanwhile, Nefero just nods to me. Good day, Alex and Marco. How was your midday meal? Alex still has his paw to his mouth, so I answer for him. It's okay. How are you? Splendid. I notice then that he's carrying a bottle in his paw. 
the glass glinting in the sunlight with his every move. I was just taking a walk through the gardens this morning when I happened across a shockingly large spider that skittered across the ground at my paws. We know what that's like. <laughs> We've encountered the spot spiders before. We have context for that. Yep. Nefarious sweeps his paw in front of himself as if showing where the spider ran. I would love to see these spiders. I wish I... These nightmare I keep, spiders. Keep one in a box. Ugh. I can't help but wonder if I'm in danger here. Alex finally speaks up then, speaking with uh, squeaking with the first syllable. No, they're rather harmless. Their venom is very mild. Ah, uh, well, that's a relief to hear, Alex. On my home planet, I'd often have to shake my loincloths out for wearing them in case of scorpions. Have I introduced you to my muscles? <laughs> also, having a scorpion bite your dick sounds like the worst. Oh, well, <laughs> not bite, but sting I was going to say, dick. they famously bite pinch, scorpions. Pinch and or sting. Of all the options, famously biting. Biting is the one option they do not do. <laughs> Either way, scorpions in your loincloth. Horrible situation. Oh, uh, really? That's terrifying. It certainly can be, but it's something you get used to. Alex and Nefaru smile at each other for a moment, and I frown at the cat, wondering what the hell he's doing. Dude, is he flirting with another guy? After that beautiful performance he gave with <laughs> Cassius? I don't know. Oh, yes. I came to give you this. Nefaru leans down and holds out the glass bottle. And now I see it's filled with a honey-colored liquid that sloshes lazily in the bottle. Stupid lazy liquid. <laughs> Stupid lazy liquid. The Buna seed oil, I promise. Much better for the fur than the adastrin oils they have for us. Alex reaches out and takes the bottle, blushing again. Th thank you, Neferu. I'll use it first thing tomorrow. And I'll see you again tomorrow to make sure you do. The jackal winks, and I think I hear Alex make a strangled noise in his throat. In the meantime, would you like to take a walk with me? Oh, oh, I... Nefaru once again extends a paw. Alex coughs awkwardly before reaching out to take it. Wonderful. You're always such great company. Would you like to join us as well, Marco? I think back on what happened in the baths. No thanks. He's trying to lure all the pets away. <laughs> he, has a, he has a little bit of a fetish for them. In that case, I'll see you around the palace. Or he's just kind of like a, he's a little bit of a man whore and he's just kind of walking around, taking anybody you can. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, anybody that'll say yes to me, I will take. <laughs> yeah. Have me. <laughs> See you, Marco. Nefaro offers his arm to the cat. And just like that, they're off into the gardens, disappearing around the many bushes lining the footpaths. I stare at them, a bit confused, still unclear on what exactly the jackal's doing. I'm also reminded that I need to ask Alex about why the hell he told Neferu about my intelligence. Yeah, once again, Alex is kind of on our shit list a little bit. I, yeah. I like him as a character, which makes it hard for me to say that. But he definitely did screw us over. But, I given, mean, but also given that Neferu is from another country, or not, not, not country's not even not the word for it, I guess, but like an entirely different kingdom, it seems like he'd have other reasons to be getting close to the pets, too. In the capital of the other country. No, that makes perfect sense. Only problem is, I don't know how to do that without seeming suspicious. Technically, there isn't a reason why it's supposed to be a secret, and I feel like bringing it up will only give the cat reason to dig more deeply. As I'm wondering all of this, I notice a shape in the bushes, near the ones that Alex and Nefero disappeared behind. Then I see a flash of red and maybe an elbow poking out. What the... Amicus? I yell out in his direction and I see the wolf jump, suddenly coming out from behind his cover. Uh, yes? Uh, was just having a look at the roses. The wolf walks towards me, his paws behind his back. I raise an eyebrow at him. Were you spying on us? Were you trying to avoid Neferu or something? Amicus ignores me this time. How was your day, Marco? Um, okay... I try to look around the wolf's side at whatever he's hiding behind his back, but he turns accordingly to keep it obscured. What are you doing? Well... Amicus takes a deep breath and I feel myself starting to get nervous. Then he goes down on one knee. Oh, goodness. 
Marco. Whoa. Over the past few weeks, I've come to enjoy your company immensely. My mouth drops. <laughs> yes. And over the past few weeks, I've come to realize that we share so much in common in terms of our goals and desires. The fucking music swell. <laughs> Amicus gives me a, a coil smi coy smile at that. What are you? So I decided that I should take the next step to make you feel more welcome and to show you how much I appreciate your kindness and understanding. The wolf suddenly swings his paws to his front, revealing that he, what he'd been hiding. It's a bouquet of purple flowers. Lavenders, to be exact, along with several smaller white flowers sprinkled into the mix. Marco, will you date me? Oh, <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, the music the cut music. off. It's perfect. I stare at the wolf, still taking in the presentation he just given me. Goodbye, phone. <laughs> Sorry. Escaped. My mouth still hangs open, and I make a few uh, sounds as I try to make, form a coherent sentence to res to respond in my mind. Ah, uh, I probably messed that up, huh? Well, hopefully the message came across clearly. What do you think? I mean, look at his cute face. <laughs> his goofy, def stupid bastard. You have to still say yes to that. Uh, I'm stunned and that's good amicus what is this i did something wrong Dude, didn't i my first boyfriend ever i had to ask him like like four <laughs> days into us dating i was like are we boyfriend and girlfriend because like, he never fucking asked me i just was like are you we are we happening? dating like can you confirm this? Is this official? If anything, this is actually like this is the best asking out I've ever seen. <laughs> it was just a bit. It, it was. was it wasn't a text message or a note or some stupid like. Yeah. Like oh, like we're dating, right? Like obviously, like just like oh, I assumed we were. But blah, at the blah, same blah. time, I think we both thought he was proposing. <laughs> oh no, definitely. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I just I thought maybe he was going to propose and there's going to be some confusion as yeah. to or, or the earthly customs versus like their <laughs> Anastrian customs were different or some something like that. But it's very cute. He took the thing we said about dating very seriously and that means that he cares. So I think it's very yeah. sweet of him. I did something wrong, didn't I? Not at all. Well, I mean, did you mean to do it? The whole thing is crazy, but Amicus's demeanor doesn't really match with the proposal he just made. Did I mean to ask you out on a date? Well, yeah, did you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now the wolf is really fidgeting, tugging at his cape nervously as he lowers the bouquet to hang limply at his side. We did say flowers were the thing that you show someone if you want to ask them on a date. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's he's he's following up on what we said basically. Yeah, no, he's he's being to. he's being very yeah. diligent. <laughs> I have an odd butterflies in the stomach feeling that won't that won't seem to go away. I don't know what it means, but I try to ignore it. The wolf suddenly deflates, looking dejected. Did I pick up the incorrect meaning? I clear my throat, trying to gather my wits. Uh, what uh, what do you think dating is? Well, what you told me, it's a relationship status that enables you to become closer, learn more about each other, along with normalizing physical intimacy. Yeah, I mean, it's not wrong. Well, he seems to have it down for the most part. <laughs> the part I'm having trouble with, though... Well, people that date also tend to have, I guess, feelings for each other. Well, yes, I have very friendly feelings towards oh, you, no. and I want to make you more comfortable around me, especially when it comes to physical intimacy. Is that, isn't that that the point of dating? Are we friends with benefits? <laughs> I sigh, realizing I hadn't explained it well enough, but then I hadn't realized that Amicus was planning to do this either. Well, people usually people don't do it unless they love each other. Or think they love each other, which is how it usually but starts. <laughs> My voice gets quieter and quieter over the course of the sentence until Amicus has to poke his ears forward to hear me. Love. What is love? Yeah. Baby, don't hurt me. Oh. Don't hurt me. Amicus no stands more. there a moment before the insides of his ears turn bright red. You said it was casual. The wolf raises his voice, the sudden increase in volume making me jump. Well, it is. I mean, you don't necessarily have to be... 
in love to date, but the intention is usually to find love. Or to see if you love each other, I guess. Dear gods, was your intention just to humiliate me after the dance? What the hell are you talking about? How was I supposed to know you were planning this? I think me asking those questions had made it pretty obvious. You assume way too much. Clearly. <laughs> the wolf t <laughs> We're back to the hand job again. <laughs> <laughs> the wolf tosses the bouquet to the side, letting it land on the bench before it rolls off to, to the ground. Amicus slumps on the bench next to me, his ears still red. I let him grumble to himself a minute or two, wanting to let him cool off from the initial embarrassment. Then I reach up to rest a hand on his broad shoulder. Sorry, I didn't mean to embarrass you. Besides, how were you, how were you supposed to know? It's an earth thing. Amicus waves a paw. It's fine. Like you said, I assume too much. I lean over to pick up the bouquet, seeing how the flowers just kind of looked bunched together. You made this yourself? Well, yes. The garden has many flowers. It smells like you. Uh, yes. It looks good. Thank you. Like you. <laughs> we sit quietly for a few minutes as I pretend to examine all the flowers. No, the you pretend to examine. <laughs> it's very polite. So, it's either friendship or love with humans. No physical intimacy unless you're bound to fall in love. So he just... Mm. He what just you wants mean? to fuck us. <laughs> like this dating culture you have. Were you interested in giving me that... You were interested in giving me that sexual favor. Does that mean you're also interested in love with me as he, well? He looks upset at the, at the like the concept of that. Does he not want us to love him? Oh well, no. He's trying, I think he's just trying to decode this shit and trying to figure out where they are because he's so... He's so far he's, off. He's so lost. I, I know, but, but it's also like... <laughs> if, if I was Marco, I would also be like... I, I'd have a lot of trepidation with this, where it's like, yeah. well, are you upset that I wanted to potentially have love with you? You seem like you're like you're angry that that yeah. is included in the sexual favor bit. It's also just like a mess of stuff that people don't normally actually talk about in concrete terms, and he's just going straight for it, no, <laughs> which no. makes it way harder to talk about too. No, I appreciate it because because like like you said, in real life, people don't talk about that sort of stuff yeah. when they're like dating each other. A lot of people interpret. Like dating as being uh, like consisting of different things. A lot yeah. of people date in a really casual way. A lot of people date in a very uh, very serious way, but they, they don't tend to have conversations about like what kind of dating they're doing yeah, you, beforehand. You, people can get like invested with each other while having completely asymmetrical ideas of what they're even doing. Yeah, they give people some person who's like really devoted to the idea of them. Eventually, like I'm dating with the intention of finding potentially finding love and getting married and having kids and all this other stuff. And this other person's like, well, I'm dating you because I want to fuck you. <laughs> and I guess if I like you enough, I'll just keep you around. I have not thought, I've not thought past this point. <laughs> mm -hmm. I blush. Well, not exactly. Didn't you say dating allows for more intimacy? But dating is also meant to look for love. Yeah, it's like, it's like level two, I yeah. guess. He's having to explain things that he doesn't fully necessarily have concrete ideas of well, how they I mean, work on his. I, yeah, pe like, with, people like people don't have concrete. Don't, yeah, we don't like. I don't think there's a consistent meaning of dating amongst human beings on yeah. Earth currently. So it would be hard to go to another planet and try to explain dating to some other species. Yep, I sigh and set the bouquet aside. Things are changing, becoming more casual. I say the word carefully, and Animicus snorts. But I guess the term you might be looking for is friends with benefits. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Benefits. Friends that have sex, basically. Ah, I see. We haven't done that, though. No. But I'm not gonna make you date me just to get a handjob. That is very nice. <laughs> I mean, I guess that, yes, I mean... I, I wouldn't make someone date me to get a handjob, either. Amga scratches behind his head before looking away again. Once again, I find myself feeling bad for him. Listen, if we weren't having this whole... I lower my voice. Illegal space adventure, I might say yes. What? Really? I said might. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? I think you're missing a key word there. I think I understand. 
No, I no. <laughs> I, f I find myself turning red again, wishing I just kept my mouth shut. Well, maybe I might as well. Well, you already asked. Without knowing the full meaning... I try to think of something else to change the subject. Knowing that my blush is clear as day the wolf, uh, to the wolf and that he's very much enjoying it. Anyway, Alexios told me that Cassius is, was training under a rhetoric person. Uh, Marcus Manlius or something? Amicus suddenly frowns. But there's, a, there's an artist called The Perp that has such a good uh he clearly got really into at asterisk so he started he started recreating certain scenes and he did a comic just of this scene this specific <laughs> because it was scene? so sweet yeah and so he did a i'll show you that later because he just did a, he did a comic of just that scene of like the misunderstanding and so on and then the, the sweet little kind of resolution marcus manius really i think that's what he said damn Amicus's tone is that of awe. Is that bad? It's simply surprising. He's the most famous at Aston rhetor rhetorician there is. I'm trying to wonder who that like who would that be comparable? Socrates. <laughs> well, if Socrates is not currently alive. Well, yeah. Who who do we have who would be like a famous like a, like a fucking Roe Ramden? <laughs> 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 the YouTuber. <laughs> Dude, I think getting a getting a lesson from them would be really That's helpful. A good actually, person. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. They, they, they throw so all many the, so many people... jokes in like a two minute span. It would just slay the other <laughs> the other person. They'd die on the spot. All the people that are famous for their debating, or whatever the fuck, are mostly just pe uh, a bunch of shitty people on the right that stack the decks in their favor so they can seem cool defeating defeating like kids. It's not. It's like who the fuck's known for debating? It's maybe uh, Sarah's kind of stupid. Sarah Z. I mean, Sarah Z is a, was a literal. She was. She was in debater. debate. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think I would uh, ask her to train me. <laughs> but that's. I, I'm I, trying to think who like a famous like. <laughs> Jordan Peterson is that a person that does a rhetorician? I feel like like he's I'm, not very good at it. He's no, just, he just. He just says a lot of words. But I get the impression that most people who are Noam rhetoricians are not people that I'm going to like very much. So I don't know a lot of them. Yeah, I'm trying to think of anyone I would like. I'm like, is it Noam Chomsky? It might be better. I've heard that name, but I don't know who that is. <laughs> this is where we embarrass. Should I be worried? Yes. <laughs> no. I don't know who Noam Chomsky <laughs> is. I should be worried. No. In fact, now that you've told me, I'm in much better shape. I, n I now have an idea of what style he might use, so that that will make it easier to counter his points. If you're sure. Famously, when he's sure, things work out. When he's sure, he's not. <laughs> I mean, he's sure, but he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Now come to my room and help me practice, just to make extra certain I'll win. Come to your room for other reasons. Come debate me, bro. Yeah, in, the, in bed. In the, in the, <laughs> debate me Ooh, in woo. bed. Ooh, woo. <laughs> <laughs> in the marketplace of my bed. <laughs> we get it up and walk back to the palace through the garden, leaving the bouquet of flowers We're behind awful people. The bed. Amicus seems to have gotten over his embarrassment about the whole incident pretty quickly. I just like him to be able to... It's just like him to be able to do that, actually. In fact, we're laughing and talking as easily as we always have, the wolf nudging me every few minutes to punctuate something he says, each one causing me to stumble. He's like elbowing him, like, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> anyway, Cass tends to stutter over his words in front of large crowds. Not much of a rhetoric rhetorician can I'm, do that. I don't know if we're saying that right, dude. I, I'm gonna lose my rhetorician. mind. Rhetorician. The wolf reaches out a paw, pressing it to the black square. Besides, what exactly is he? <laughs> oh, well, what are you doing hi. in here, bud? What are you doing in here? Amicus and I stare in surprise as Cassius stares back at us with what looks like even more surprise. Then his eyes narrow. Excuse me. He tries to move around us, but Amicus blocks his way, growling. This is the second time he's been in this room when he's not supposed to be. It's not your room. Yeah. What kind of annoying little brother are you, just sneaking into people's yeah. rooms? What the hell are you doing in here, Cassius? Amicus seems to reserve his actual yelling only for Cassius, so it makes me jump when I hear it. Cassius collects himself quickly, despite Amicus's intimidating snarls. 
Not much of your business, is it? You're in my room. If you're in my room, then it is my business. What are you doing? The wolf starts to advance on Cassius, stopping just a few feet away. Move, Amicus, otherwise I'm calling Kato. I hate that that pose. That one, of that Cassius condescending pisses explanation. pisses me off. Because he has his little hand in front of him. He's like, he's like yeah. I'm explaining something to you, and I think you're dumb. <laughs> that is what that whole look looks like. Yep, yep. Yep, he's he doesn't think you know what a black hole is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's this thing. <laughs> it pulls in light. It turns into a pickle. <laughs> Amicus eyes Cassius closely, then finally pulls back, folding his arms. Snooping around to find something that might give you a chance in the trial? I can tell you now you'll be coming up short. Obviously, you have nothing to offer you have nothing to offer to help me win. Then why come here? Cassius ignores the other wolf and wa walking past Amicus before passing by me. He turns then. And you know, I wouldn't be worried after that pitiable display you and your pet put on. You smug fuck. Look at your yep, smug he's face such a now. Douchebag. I don't like you at all, Cassius. He's awful. You're a punk ass bitch. He turns to me and I can't help but frown at him. As stupid as he is ugly. I know that Cassius Ooh. is just trying to get under Amicus's skin. He knows that he cares about me. Talking shit about us? And our, our little yeah. mole rat body? <laughs> <laughs> we are probably ugly. No. We are probably ugly. But you're not supposed to say that out loud. Everyone knows. <laughs> if someone's ugly, you don't say it out loud. To his face. But as Cassius reaches out to brush my chin with a paw, I can't stop myself from batting it away. Cassius' eyes, wi eyes widen then, and I can see his paw draw back. I flinch, but immediately Amicus is there, reaching out to grab Cassius by his cape. The smaller wolf is pulled back from me, and but Amicus doesn't stop there. As Cassius stumbles past Amicus, the bigger wolf swings his paw, smacking Cassius square on the nose. Cassius immediately goes down on his ass, at, what, at, at which point I hear another sound. Amicus and I stare down at the smaller wolf as he sits there, stunned. Then he suddenly scrambles up to his feet, a paw to his rear. Amicus, Amicus, you bastard, tail-raising lover of ass! I, can, I take a step back as Cassius practically sprays blood from his mouth. Amicus pulls me to his side, eyes narrowed, but I can feel his heart hammering against my shoulder. I'll throw you both in the dungeon for that. I'll have you- I'll have him executed when I'm Emperor. I see tears start to spill out of Cassius's eyes before he turns and stumbles out of the room, his tail hanging limply to the side. I think he broke his tail. There are- there, there aren't- wait. <laughs> there aren't what? Are there bones in your- in a dog's tail? Yeah, do dogs can break their tail. Looking over my dog. Can you break your tail? She, does, not, she does you, not know. Are you considering for the first time that there's bones in a dog's tail? Did you think it was just a weird muscle? I mean, there there are some animals that just have straight up muscle tails. Yeah. I mean, I guess a dog has a handful of bones in her tail. <laughs> she came okay. down to be examined. It's so so helpful, Kiki. No, it feels like she has bones in her tail. Yeah. I, I, I believe this. <laughs> We're having a moment. Amicus and I stand there for a long time after he leaves, the silence almost oppressive after the loud fight. A few minutes later, Amicus is flat on his stomach, looking under his bed as he mumbles something under his breath. I stand awkwardly off to the side, watching as he sweeps a paw underneath, as if feeling for something. What are you doing? Amicus grunts as he gets to his knees, then stands up, looking up at the ceiling as he turns in a slow circle. Looking for whatever Cass might have been doing. You know, you know what he was doing? I have my suspicions. Which are? Amicus st stops his turning and looks to me, folding his arms. Well, I'm not sure, but a recording device, possibly. Or he was just snooping for information. Just bugging the room. Can we just ask Calm? No, his capabilities are very limited, despite what his intelligence might suggest. 
He doesn't record our activities specifically so we can't spy on each other. Rules put in place millennia ago. I sigh and look at the door, still feeling a little shaken up at what had just happened. Why can't you just lock the door or something? Amica shrugs. That's something only the Emperor can do. Again, rules that have been in place for a very long time. So you just place the couch in Against front of the, the door, door and just say it was a design choice. <laughs> that doesn't but, seem But then safe. again, how would you get in, I guess? So, yeah. issues. Well, only the most trusted are allowed in the palace, after all. Which tends to only be family. Aside from Neferu. Aside from him, yes. You don't have much freedom for being the Emperor's son. You just noticed. Amicus huffs and stands in the middle of the room, his arms folded, a deep frown on his face. He was probably just trying to find out what you're planning for this, the next trial. We know some stuff about him already. Hmm. Amex continues to look concerned. What is it? I just... Amicus lowers his voice. Worry it might have something to do with you. After what he said as he was leaving, it's left me uneasy is all. Oh yeah, the thing about executing me. That is worrisome. <laughs> yep, not a good way for the stakes to be raised if we lose. I haven't had time to think about the possibility of someone on the verge of near absolute power wanting me dead yet. Do you think he was serious? Amicus is quiet for a moment. No. But obviously I'm not going to assume he wasn't. I won't even give him a chance at the Emperorship now. I frown. And you were going to before? No, I, I'm i just going to make extra sure now. <laughs> I'm quiet, deciding to sit on the bed instead. <laughs> oh no. This is the dumbest shit sometimes. Uh, I don't like that the situation has become a lot more serious than it already was. After a moment, Amicus comes to sit next to me, the depression he creates in the mattress forcing me to lean sideways into him. He wraps an arm around me. Don't worry about it at all. He has no chance. And besides, I wouldn't let him touch you. How would you be able to do that if he's emperor, though? Well, I'm also his older brother. Some relationships don't change, even if the official ones do. Uh, yeah. uh, I think a lot of, uh... I think in the past, a lot of brothers have had their other brothers executed. Yep. I'm pretty sure it's a, not very... a good has, not a good history like that. Like I think I think that's what happened with the uh, whatever that Shakespeare play I was trying to think of, of like one of the kings that was supposedly kind or whatever, and I think his brother executed him. Yeah, probably. I mean, I just don't think this is uh, usually how it. I, just, yeah. I don't think it bodes well for the siblings. Siblings have wronged each other plenty without uh, this much power on the line. <laughs> And this is a lot of power on the line. I was thinking of you and your brother. When no. You guys became emperor. Oh, goodness. Death. I stay, I stay quiet, unconvinced. Anyway, it would look awfully bad on his record. He just let his anger get the best of him. We'll quickly forget about the matter when the next trial comes up. Amicus squeezes me. And this is all assuming he'd win. He won't. That's what you said last time. And we had an unforeseeable mishap last time. There isn't much possibility for one of those to happen in this trial. We sit there a while longer, Amicus rubbing my shoulder with his paw. Despite my rising anxiety, it's comforting. And before long, I'm leaning my head against his shoulder. And much later. <laughs> <laughs> a whole week, jeez. We fell asleep for a long time. <laughs> wow, it's, it's like click. By Adam Sandler. Fast forwarding through life. <laughs> by Adam Ever, Sandler. By Adam Sandler. He made the whole <laughs> movie. <laughs> <laughs>